Thanks, guys. We're either Grandmaster Ricardo Nakamura, who played a draw in his final game as black against Jan Nepomniczy. That start with the end. What were your thoughts when deciding whether or not to take the repetition? Well, I mean, I think it was a game of chicken. I was trying to figure out who who's going to gamble or not gamble. I mean, I think I think the problem ultimately is that we're both low on time. I think if we had maybe an hour on the clock, there's a very good chance that the game would have continued. I think one of us would have deviated from making the repetition. But the problem is we're both down to about 20, 25, a little bit less than 25 minutes. And it was just a very, very tough situation to be in. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because now I've, now I've seen some of the analysis. And I mean, uh, perhaps I should have played on at the end. But some of the moves that I think the engines are recommending, like playing this G5, this Knight of Four with like G5 is just... I mean, so foreign. I, I don't think Jan or I even considered these ideas that I, I don't feel too bad about it. Um, so I, I, perhaps I should have continued, but I think at the end of the day, I also was looking at the other game and I, I perceived Ferruja to be a little bit better in his game against Gukash at the time. I'm not so sure if that's true anymore, but it looked to me like he was a little bit better. He couldn't really be worse because I thought he could like break the white pawn structure. He didn't end up playing AB2. I mean, white got C4 and B3, but uh, I did see that that game was kind of um, kind of up in the air. And so it, it just seemed practical to make the draw and just, just go for it tomorrow. And the fact that you took the draw, Gukesh's game is still ongoing. Even if he comes back and wins, you still control your own destiny because you play Gukesh. Did that factor into your decision at all? Well, I mean, it's it's like uh, when I was talking with my team, there's there's a good good term to use uh, when, when we talk about poker. And I mean, I would essentially say that when you look at Jan's situation, uh, he's, he's out of position relative to Gukesh or myself. I mean, I know a lot of people don't play poker, so they're not going to understand, but it, basically what it means is that Jan doesn't, ha he doesn't have any certainty in the final game. Like, he has his chance today with white, tomorrow he's black against Fabiano, whereas, like, Gukesh gets to try today. If I hold, I get to try tomorrow. So both of us are in a better situation um, relative to Jan, which I think, I, I, I was kind of surprised, actually, that Jan just played the Spanish, because I thought he would try something a little bit more wild. I, I felt like this was his big chance, but again, you never know. The games could all be draws. We could have tiebreakers and, and who knows but um yeah i mean i I'm, I'm pretty happy with where i'm at and also that was that also factored into when i decided to take the draw because before the game today i mean i also told myself that if if you know if i if gukesh wins and i'm half point down i'm happy with that situation with white in the last round needing to win um so it's like if i'm happy with that before the game why now do i suddenly change um and risk risk everything today i mean i know i'm sure magnus somewhere is laughing and you know the whole be a shark thing is probably thinking that both of us should have tried to play for more but it is what it is let's see if we can continue the poker analogy our statisticians in, in staff and chess.com had you on the button today because they had you at 40% odds to win the tournament pre-round. Do you agree that it's, that was about the right number pre-round? I don't know. I mean, being on the button is an interesting term because I think um, that's that's giving when you have the button, that's that's a lot of power in poker. But I, I, I don't think I really had that kind of power because I did have the black pieces today. Um, you know, I, I think the percentages are all kind of random, I would say, at the end of the day. I think it's really, it comes down to who controls their nerves better. Um, and, and, and whoever does that probably will have the best chances. So 40% maybe, I, I mean, I think all of us, it's basically a coin flip at this point. At the post-game press conference, Jan Napomnich did almost all the talking, almost all of the lines. And you had mentioned the last couple of rounds you were a little bit fatigued. Did, did that have anything to do with fatigue, or was he just on a roll and you let him keep going at the press conference? Well, I mean, I think he was just on a roll, so I let him keep going. I mean, there, there were a couple of moments that were interesting. I mean, I could have played Queen H6 instead of Queen H5. Um, but o overall, I mean, it's I didn't really see the point. So I wouldn't say I'm tired. Definitely not, because there was a nice rest day yesterday, which was, uh, which was quite good in terms of recovering. Um, but yeah, I, I think you know it was just it was it was an interesting game, and uh, luckily I was never I think in, in any serious danger. And whenever you have games like that, it's much easier to kind of relax and just just move forward. Do you think maybe you're more lax than the players coming in? Because I've noticed during the uh, first move today, you were laughing with uh, Matt Collins, the uh, NFL player. And a couple days ago, when there was a mention of the Allman brothers, you were getting a kick out of that. And I don't see any other players reacting pre-round. Do, do you feel like you're a little bit looser going into the games than some of your competitors? Well, I mean, of course I am. I have no pressure on me. Everybody, everybody else, this is their once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't need to be blasé about it. But, yeah, I, I think also, frankly, for me, like, I'm, I'm trying to enjoy it in a different kind of way. I would say that, uh, you know, I've played a couple of Canada's, but also, frankly, I mean, the way I view it, this is either my last one or second to last one. I mean, I've, I've stated, I think, multiple times that I don't intend to play professionally past the age of 40. Um, so, like, I'm just trying to enjoy the experience. Also, frankly, I think, you know, you have all these great, um, I don't know, you want to say celebrities or, or uh, influencers is a bad word these days, but you, you have all these uh, VIPs is basically showing up and ultimately I think it's important that they have a good experience too um, because like today you know Jan was very stoic and I mean I, I understand it of course
course, with, with such an important game um, against me. But, you know, you want these people to have a good experience, to enjoy it, because you, you never know what can happen down the road. Now, it doesn't mean they'll sponsor an event, but, like, even if they have a good, positive feeling about chess, um, there, there's more opportunities for something more to happen. I mean, you never know. Like, the, the, the guy today, he's the wide receiver. You know, he could go and play chess with Josh Allen. You never know. Maybe Josh Allen gets really big, big gets really into chess, for example, and it goes from there. You know, of course, there's Joe Burrows, who plays chess quite a lot as well. But, I mean, in general, if these VIPs have a positive experience, that can only be a good thing. Um, so I, I try to be pretty pretty relaxed and, uh, and you know, chatty. And, and I mean, I, I enjoy seeing these people who love chess so much show up. That's great to hear. And speaking about your enjoyment, you've expressed your love for Canada before. You've lived here for a bit. You love sushi. You love hockey. Are you getting to enjoy Toronto? Well, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, I, I try not to be emotional in general, but, um, you know, uh, when I went to Vancouver, it was actually, I think, exactly 16, it was right about 16 years ago today. It was right around April 20th, 2008, when I came came to Vancouver, and I decided to spend uh, the better part of that year there, and it was a very uh, important year for me in terms of, you know, learning how to enjoy life, and that helped me break through 2700 and everything else. Um, so... Uh, you know, things like that aren't lost on me. Um, Toronto itself, I, I'm going to be honest, it's not my favorite city. Vancouver is where, where my heart is and always will be. But um, nonetheless, to see the enthusiasm for chess here is definitely a good thing. So I'm enjoying it. Final question. Tomorrow against Gukesh, biggest chess game of your life? Biggest chess game of my life. I mean, on one hand, yes, but, you know, I, I think I've said it many times, you know, I feel like in general I'm playing with house money, everything kind of at this point. It's like it's like winning the lottery and then trying to win the lottery again. I mean, I, I think when you look at everything that happened with the chess boom and how, how the world, um, alongside the chess world as well, both changed, I mean, I feel like I've already won the lottery, so it feels like trying to win the lottery again. And sure, it would be nice, but honestly, uh, you know, I'm just trying to play a good game of chess, and if it's not good enough, it's not good enough, but that's life. Thanks so much. There's a man who's really enjoying himself. Now back to you in the studio.